Yeah. Oh, I love weddings. I miss weddings. I love the excitement of seeing the beautiful bride and the handsome groom and everyone celebrating together. It's been ages since we've had a wedding. <sighs> ah, wow, what's going on here? What's happening? Hey everyone, what's happening here? I'm just reminiscing and I'm just thinking about how I miss weddings. I know, it feels so strange, no weddings. I just... <sighs> weddings are so special. It's a simcha and um, I, I just want to begin by saying that uh, our hearts go out to all the brides and grooms who've had to cancel their weddings, postpone their weddings, and um, really our hearts go out to you. And that's one of the reasons why we've done this production this evening, right? Am I meant to explain what the now? Well, well, you're, well you're explaining why we decided to do it now. The reason why we've decided to do it this evening <clears throat> is because tonight, you know, we're in the Omer period and there are two opinions of the when the exact morning period, when we don't have weddings, when we don't listen to music, when we don't shave, have haircuts, etc. And uh, according to the mainly the Ashkenazi minhag, the, certainly the minhag that uh, we follow at Norris Lee and the United Synagogue, is we go from Rosh Chodesh Iyar, second day Rosh Chodesh, up till, uh, up till the three days before Shavuos. And so tonight or tomorrow being Rosh Chodesh Iyar is the last opportunity to get married. So we thought... Wouldn't it be a great idea to have a wedding? And we've had so much fun preparing this wedding. It's been great. It's been great. So we're gonna we're gonna take you. We need to have like a chuppah. And... We're going to have a chuppah, but before we start, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what the significance of a Jewish wedding was. We all know we love weddings. We love the bride. We love the groom. We love the dancing. We love the flowers, etc., etc. But really, to know that according to Judaism. The marriage between a man and woman is something which is so beautiful and is so sacred and is so meaningful. And that's why we have these really, really meaningful rituals. There's a reason for everything that we do at the chuppah. And actually, um, if you look in the Torah, it says the Kuruvim, the cherubs, which were in the holiest part of the Holy of Holies, in between this, these two cherubs, the Shekhinah, the presence of Hashem resided, meaning that this was the ultimately the most holy place in the Bet HaMikdash and the Mishkan. So really, a man and woman in holy matrimony and having true happiness and having true meaning in their lives, that is really something which we really, really respect and we aspire to and we work on. We look at marriage as something which is a gift. If you think about love, there's nothing which is as painful as love, but there's nothing which is as joyful as love. And finding the right person, finding the soul, your soulmate, to merge, a merge of two souls becoming one, is something which is really, really important in Jewish life and something that we should all aspire to. I'm very, very lucky that I do teach a lot of brides and it's my passion to really prepare them for weddings and to prepare them to keep their marriage beautiful and exciting and special. And that's why we're excited about sharing this special chup with you. And the other thing which is also very interesting to know is that um, everyone without fail has always said to me, the chuppah is the highlight of the wedding. Yes, the, the party is such fun, but there is something about the chuppah. And it's a very, very special time, and it's a day which should be used properly. The bride and groom are like angels. They're like, it's, there's, there's a symbolic, there's, it's symbolically like Yom Kippur. And they've got a direct line to God. So um, we want to share this experience with you, and that hopefully when you go to your next chuppah, it will be more meaningful and more special and to understand why this is such a significant part of Jewish life. Yeah, we're going to talk you through the various songs and the various options. So for many people who have made a wedding recently, this should evoke lots of memories. All the weddings and all the chuppahs that I've done, that perhaps I've been singing at your weddings, those of you who are watching now. Um, I still get excited for chuppahs when a bride and groom come to the house to discuss the chuppah and to discuss their wedding. I'm still excited. You I have to, you have You've to. got to be excited. I think the day that I stop being excited, 
Time to give it all up. I agree. I agree. Because every single marriage is the beginning of a new world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now the question is, do they want to see, do you want to see a picture of what we looked like at our wedding? I think you do. Okay, so hang on. I've got it here. Don't laugh. And okay, here we go. Are you sure? You sure you want to do this? Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. I think we are. Da -da <laughs> look at that. Rafa, I think you look such a baby. Uh, I, I think was so. I was a baby. I was a baby. Proud of it. Okay, so what do you think? Rafa, if you stand up for a second. Whoa. If you stand up. Yeah. And then, you know what? You come on this side. Okay. Let's see how we've changed. Oh, no, I don't know. You haven't changed. No, you haven't know. changed. You definitely, you certainly haven't changed. I have. Much older, grey, white. Anyway, That's there we are. Experience. Exactly. I Lots of happy up. times. And much water has passed under the bridge. Anyway, enough. That's how often we look at Yes, thank you. Right, enough of that. On to the wedding, ladies and gentlemen. You Here guys go. Know, yeah. The wedding must be taking place right now. Can I just ask one question before before I go in, before I get ready? Can I just ask one question? Why is it? That in Anglo jewelry at the Tish before the chuppah, the guys that are having a whiskey and having a lachaim only know one song, which goes like this: Whoa, 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 whoa ay, 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 ay. And then one of the guys will say, "Come on, guys, new song, new song. Here we go, new song. Whoa, 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 whoa ay, ay. They just don't, they don't know any other songs. Time to teach you new songs. Let's do this. I'll see you, I'll see you under the chuppah. Don't be late. Don't I'll be come, late. I'll get to see you in a minute. Yeah. I'm just going to explain to you a little bit about the bedecken, just that you're really prepared for it. So what happens is, is traditionally, the bride and the groom don't see each other the week before the wedding. This is so that they have a heightened excitement and anticipation to see each other, and they sit separately until the bedecken. And um, the bride will sit with her friends and be like the queen. And the groom will be with his friends and he'll be having fun and singing and rejoicing with his friends. And then the moment comes and the groom comes to bedeck the bride to cover her with a veil. Now, there's lots and lots of explanations about why we do this, but I have to say, I'm not going to go through them all, but I just want to share my favourite explanation, which is that he symbolically is starting to protect her and to care for her and to look after her and to clothe her. So that's how the ceremony really starts. But I think we should run because we don't want to be late and I want to get a good seat. See you there. Tonight, thank you so much for playing. Pleasure. Thank you. So this is exciting. Is this not exciting? I'm so excited for the chuppah. Here we go. So we're just about, you know, after you've spoken so beautifully about marriage, Rachel hates marriage jokes. She doesn't like them. It's not fair. I can't do any marriage jokes because she's got such passion and love for the marriage. She doesn't like any of these corny marriage jokes. So I'm afraid it's going, to be, it's going to have to be something else tonight. You'll see. So I think we're just about ready to bring in our groom, our Khatan. I hope he's ready. I hope he's ready. It'll be a surprise for you. And we're going to bring him into this song called Mi Adir. This is actually Chuppah Liturgy. This is, talks about, just as the Chuppah is about to unfold, Mi Adir Al Hakol, he who is the almighty of everything, Mi Baruch Al Hakol, he who is blessed, and etc. It goes Aleph Bet Gimel Dalad, Mi Gadol Al Hakol, Mi Dagul Al Hakol, Hu Yavarech Es Hachosan Bes He should bless the bride and groom. 
Can so, I just say yeah, something sure. it's so funny? This is something just really funny. Um, I've had such funny comments about the the bride and groom. Everyone is anticipating whose wedding it is. I've had comments like, whose wedding is it? You know you're not allowed to do weddings. I know I'm not allowed to do weddings. I would never do anything I'm not allowed to do. Um, so let's wait and see who the lucky groom is. This is too exciting. Okay, are we ready? So, bit of magic here. Focus, guys, focus. Whoa. Introducing Adam. <laughs> into her chuppah. Let's see what she's chosen to walk into. Okay, here we go. Oh, 
lovely song. Welcome, by the way. Welcome to our bride, Talia. Welcome. So she needs to be moved a bit. What? It's a bit inappropriate, but here we go. <laughs> Stand over to the side a little bit. That's it. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, can I just, just give a little point? No, it's nothing major. Just to say that um, we don't believe in giving away our children. It's not as if the bride is given away by her father. I like to look at it as more as she's escorted to her wedding by her, her father and the groom, by his mother, his parents. You know, our children are always close to our hearts and we just escort them, them to the hooker to start a new life together. Yeah, you know, once I was, I was running, uh, I needed to get to a chuppah and I didn't know the exact venue, I'd never been there before. And uh, one of the congregants, one of the invitees, were offered to give me a lift. Now, normally, I'm quite independent. I like, to, I like to get to the chuppah on my motorbike. I know that I'll have a parking space. I know that I'll have time to prepare with the musicians. So I don't normally accept. And for some unknown reason, I accepted to take a lift from this fellow. And of course, we get to the venue, and there's nowhere to park. Do you remember this story? And the guy says, uh, I hear him muttering something. I said, what are you saying? And he says, dear God, you find me a parking space, I'll give a thousand pounds to the shul. A thousand pounds to the shul. This is what he said. Like he, he wants to find a parking space. And would you believe it, just then, outside the venue, outside the hotel, somebody just pulls out and there's a parking space. And he turns, he turns to God, he goes, it's okay, it's okay, I found one, thanks so much. So there you go, there you go. Anyway, we are ready to sing Eishas Chayil. Eishas Chayil is when the uh, bride circles the groom. And do you want to explain, Rachel, why? Well, I'm going to do this also. I'm just going to quickly tell you also about the chuppah. If you notice that the chuppah, we know the traditional chuppah is the canopy where the four um, sides are open and they're meant to symbolically symbolize the home, the tent of Abraham and Sarah, the ultimate home of hospitality. And I just wanted to share a lovely idea that um, we're meant to, we want this young couple to start on the right foot. We want them to have the ideal, most, most idealistic way to start their marriage. It's going to be their first marital home. And just like the very, very elegant upmarket um, companies, um, building developers who sell flats and houses, even when the flats and houses aren't ready, they'll have a show home because then people can feel exactly what it feels like when it's ready, this is what we're hoping for for the young couple, that in those first few moments of marriage, they are going to be reaching high, idealistic, like Abraham and Sarah, hospitality, their home open to everyone, open on all sides, and more than that, open to all types of people, to be respectful to everyone. So that's why we have um, the traditional canopy. And just before Avrami is going to say about Eishat Chayil, um, we know that the bride um, surrounds the groom seven times. This is symbolic comparing to the seven days of creation, that we've got a whole new world being created. And also because she doesn't traditionally um, give him a ring under the chuppah, she is surrounding him with her love. What a lovely thought. Here we go, Eishas Chayil. Eishas Chayil Oh, 
always the best. They evoke the most wedding -y feelings. How about, it, it, that, that song is so beautiful and I'm sure it's been sung at so many weddings. Send messages if it was sung at your wedding. What about this song? Everyone loves this song. Everyone loves a bit of shweki for weddings. How about, how about when we do Mehera? Mehera is one of the favourites. Come on then. Jerusalem. And uh, how more poignant than it is today when all weddings and all gatherings have been shut down and we can't have our weddings and we can't have our celebrations. So we really feel, Mehera Hashem Elokeinu, please God, soon in our days. May we hear this celebration again in the streets. We're all craving wedding. It's actually being here actually feels quite wedding. It feels like Rata Chuppah. So we're very, I'm hoping that feeling is coming across to you. It's so nice to be at a simcha, nice to be at a wedding. I hope you're dressed up for it. You're making, you're making me cry even in, in our dining room. Yeah, it's good. Good to have a little bit of emotion. So please God, we will be returned to our former glory and we will have the weddings and the celebrations that we're all craving for at the moment. So then the um, ceremony unfolds. We have the Birchus Erosin, the Birchus Kiddushin that takes place. And we have the ring that, that uh, the groom gives to the bride and says, Hare at Mekudeshesli, behold, you are consecrated to me with this ring. In fact, you know, <coughs> at many of the weddings that I do, the groom repeats after the person that's officiating Sometimes the rabbi, sometimes someone else. They, they've. Oh my gosh! No guests allowed. There's a there's a ring on the door. Who could be? And who could it be? Very embarrassing. Very embarrassing. Oh god! There shouldn't be any visitors. That is a bit cringe. Who's? Oh my gosh! It's the police. Good evening, officer. Good evening. Yes, officer. How can I help you? I've had a few complaints from down the road saying a wedding's going on in here. No, 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 officer, officer, there's, there's no wedding. There is no wedding. That's, that is a mistake. You're mistaken. There is no wedding taking place here. I mean, I was sitting outside in my van. I saw a silhouette of a bride and groom under a cape. Yeah, well, the thing is, you're still mistaken because it might look like that, but I promise you, officer, we would, I mean, come on. I'm from in Rockler Friday. Would we do anything wrong? Seriously, officer, there is no wedding taking place here. I mean, I can't really take any chances, to be honest. You're welcome to come and have a look. And, and You want to have a look around? Yes, please. Okay, come on in, have a look around. Hello, hello. Oh, 
two, three, four in. Don't worry, nothing's going on. Seems like this community really can't stand without having a wedding. They've gone to the extent of building plastic silhouettes of a bride and groom in the dining room. That's right, because we are so desperate to have weddings, officer, so we're trying to reenact them. And, and um, while you're here, officer, perhaps, perhaps a, a lachaim or two? Sorry, not on duty for me. Oh, come on. Come on. No, come on, no. Come on, officer. Oh, go on then. Just one? One for the road? There you go. Lachaim. Lachaim. I'll join you. I'll join you. Are you pleased? Are you okay with that, officer? I'm okay with it now that I've checked up and seen what's going on. If I were you, I would patrol other parts of Golders Green. Thank you and have a good night, mate. Have Thank a good you. night. Thank you for coming, though. Thank you. Oh, bless him. Bless him. Looking after us, I would say. Anyway, so the wedding unfolds. And you know, you don't always have to have traditional songs at your wedding. You can have anything. Some people have, you know, that lovely sing, that lovely song, All of Me. You know that one? Some people like that one. Here we go, Dobby.
lovely wedding this is turning out to be. I hope we're invited to the dinner. Can I just say, we also, we just loved all the preps. It's been such fun. There's been so many giggles, so many laughs. It's just been the greatest fun preparing. And so we're just, we're also loving every minute. I was in the middle of telling you this story before. So sometimes the rabbi, when, he, when the groom is putting the ring on the finger of the bride, so the rabbi says, hare, and the groom says, hare, then he says, at, at, mekudeshet, mekudeshet, behold, you are consecrated to me. Now, because the rabbi doesn't want to marry the bride, he's not allowed to say the sentence, behold, you are consecrated to me. So normally they turn to me and I say the word li, which means to me. The problem was, we were doing a wedding and the groom's name was Li. He didn't understand Hebrew or Aramaic. So the rabbi was going, Hare, At, Mekodesha, Mekodesha. And I said, Li. And he was like, yeah, what, 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 what? It's a true story. And we had to do the whole thing again. Anyway, then we move on to the Kesuba is being read. And then we have Sheva Brochus. The Sheva Brochus. Rafi, you want to explain a little bit about what these beautiful blessings mean? Well, they're actually quite interesting because, um, you know, you would think that under the chuppah, the brachot would be about that this young couple should be healthy, should be happy, should be successful. And it's actually talking all about the foundations of the world. And yes, the last one is gila rina ditzavachedva, all the blessings that we would expect to be bestowed upon a young couple. And the reason for this is, is that this couple are building their own world and they are starting a new world and they are part of the continuation of the creation of the world. And that's why we have these very interesting brachot. Let's have some of the Shema brachot. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. Are you quite enjoying the I am. I remember one chuppah, for some reason, I didn't, ch I didn't check the bottle beforehand that has one of these metal openers and the stupid thing wouldn't open. And I was like, ah, and then okay. it, this very, very sharp bit of metal, as I opened it, cut, slashed my hand. So I was standing, I was standing under the chuppah, my hand was bleeding, holding the cup of wine, handing it to the bride, white dress and groom, it was a nightmare. Oh, well, we got through it and everyone lived there very, very happily ever after. Let's have some shabba Here we go. <laughs> Oh, 
Sheva Brachas out. Sometimes the Chazan does all of them. It's lovely to perhaps give them out to family or other Rabbanim present. And then, after, you know, he's still bothering me that he's standing there with his hands in his pocket. He looks very, very laid back. I would say, if you've got this attitude, mate, I mean, I hope he's going to pull himself together, this guy. I really do. I hope he, because he's, he's standing there. He hasn't moved. With the hands in his pockets. She looks rather sweet, I have to say. She's got amazing hair. She does have amazing hair. Mm, like the hair. Love the hair. Where's that from? Mm, what do you mean? <laughs> lovely. Really lovely. Can't be yours, Rafa. Okay. So then we come to the part. This is, this is the tearjerker of tearjerkers because this last song, where we end the chuppah, Im eshkachech Yerushalayim. Tishkach Yemini. If I ever forget thee, O Jerusalem, May my right hand, may I, may I lose, lose the use of my right hand, may my tongue stick to, the, to its palate. Because at this time, the bride and groom, at their height of the joy, their joy, still must remember that without our Beis Hamikdash, without our temple, we still need, we are still incomplete and we cannot be totally joyous because without our temple, which we pray for every day, our joy is not totally complete. And perhaps now, as I was saying before, now that we don't have our shuls and our places of meeting and our bate midrashim and our yeshivas, but primarily our shuls, our bate knesios, the places where we come to pray, perhaps we can get a real taste of what this song means, imeshkachech Yerushalayim. When we're unable to have a base, we, we do not have a base amigdash, and we do not have our places of worship, we do not have our shuls. So, Imesh Kachech Yerushalayim, I'm going to try and get through this song without crying. Um, you can cry as much as you like, get the tissues ready. Here we go. Again, it's shweki, I'm afraid. <coughs> but everyone loves a bit of shweki. <laughs> Especially when driving. 
Okay, here we go. So, let's see if he gets this. And then it's time to celebrate. And then, it's, how are we doing for time? Are we doing okay? We're doing okay for time. All right, here we go. Make sure you get it first time around. I've seen, by the way, I've seen everything. I've seen the glass being changed by the mates of the Khatan, by the friends of the groom. They put in an unbreakable glass and the poor guy is stamping and stamping away. It's so embarrassing. Trust me, I've seen, I've seen brides fainting, grooms fainting, mothers, fathers fainting. It's a whole party under the chuppah, but it's so, when you're under the chuppah and you're surrounded by Khatan and Kala and parents, it's a magical moment and the songs and the music, and especially when you know what the songs and all the blessings mean, the whole thing becomes alive and your wedding ceremony becomes alive and it's just that magical moment. So here we go. Here we go. Are you ready for this, Adam? You're up for it? Okay, I'm gonna lift you. Okay, here we go. Ready? <laughs> Brides are looking on in absolute amazement. Okay. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three, boom! Whoa! Yes! That's one, here we go. And the reason I put the eyes on at the end. Here we go. The reason I put the eyes on now, there you go, look at that, is that they should always have eyes for each other. Isn't that beautiful? Aww. You should be blessed and always have wonderful, wonderful moments together and a beautiful and a happy and a healthy married life and may have Esrim for years and years and there should be generations and generations from you guys. Mazel tov, mazel tov. Right, I think we're ready to eat. Are we ready to eat? Yeah, we're ready. We're okay, ready. let's go beautiful, in. Let's go in. Set. Here we go. Okay, in we go. In we go. Lovely chuppah. So nice, so nice to do a wedding. You know. Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm, I love that. I absolutely love that. I hope you love that too. So nice to be able to sing the wedding songs once again. You know, I was uh, once at a very, very beautiful wedding, and it was somewhere remote in the countryside. I can't remember where exactly it was. And this was my my all time fear that in the middle of the dinner. Um, armed robbers came in and you know everyone's wearing expensive jewellery and watches and it's uh, it's dangerous that's why you very often see security at weddings do you, do you not remember this these armed these armed robbers dash in and they went straight to the top table and uh, they they went straight to the uh, to the mother of the bride and start taking off her jewellery and to the father of the groom and start taking off his watch and as he steps back, his mask slips and he's worried that people have recognised him. I can't believe you don't remember this. His, mask, his, his face mask slipped slightly and he turns to the waiter who was serving at the time and he goes, Did you see my face? And he says, uh, Yes, I did. Boom! He shoots him dead! And the waiter, do you not remember? <laughs> and then, you know, the photographer is taking pictures and he turns to the frog, Did you see my face? He said. He said, I didn't see your face, but I saw the side profile, boom, shoots him dead. And then he said to the uh, father of the, he goes to the father of the bride, 
He says, did you see my face? And he said, no, I didn't see your face at all. Your wife, my wife, I think my wife saw your face. It's a good joke, come on, Rachel, it's a great joke. She hates those jokes, but I think it's so fantastic. Can I have a piece of cake, please? I think my sense of humor is getting better than yours there. No, no, it was, it was fantastic. You know, anyway, the, uh, the uh, Hassan and Kala had gone. They, do you they're think having photos. They're, they're having photos. photos, and then they go off and have, uh, have uh, some nice pictures in the I'm park. Not, I'm not just saying this, by the way. Go on. But yeah. you do the most beautiful chuppah. Oh, that's very kind this of is, you. This has not been rehearsed. This has not been rehearsed. Oh, and thank I you so much. It was just... It was just so lovely. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Serenading to me. Oh, thank you. But it was it was lovely to do a wedding again. It was so nice. But um, just to say to everyone that uh, we're missing simchas and we're missing them. Not just weddings. We're missing bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. And, and for, the, for the people whose weddings we have got good friends, whose weddings have actually been. Like postponed. postponed, yeah, postponed. No right. one's cancelled their weddings. I made a mistake before by saying cancelled. I meant postponed. postponed. Um, but it's very hard, you know, when you're looking forward to the big day with your I family mean, and friends. friends the wedding was meant to be on Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, so, you know... It, it's Please God, at the right time. You know, they say, they say that when a baby is born, there's special divine providence that they that Hashem knows exactly when a baby comes into... Beshat Abba. Beshat that's why we well, That's why we wish ladies who are about to give birth or who are pregnant, we say Bashar Taba, in the right moment the baby should come into this world. And the same thing, I mean, when, when the, the ring goes on the finger, when the ring goes on the finger, not too early, not too late, at the right moment. So we don't know when, and it's, of course it's frustrating. Yeah, two wedding anniversaries. Absolutely. Yeah, two wedding two anniversaries. Wedding anniversaries. Two prezies. Oh yeah, okay, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, so I, we feel for those people and we know that we will have the, the opportunity to celebrate, but it has been amazing to celebrate with all of you. As I said, it was great fun. It was great Lots fun. Lots of laughs. Nothing like happy hour with Avrami and Rachana. Lots of laughs. Yeah, and, and by the way, and thank you Dobby. Dobby, come. Thank you so much as usual for Dobby's amazing playing. Give it to me. Yes. Thank you so much. Great playing again. No and, do without him. Fantastic, fantastic. And Moishi. And Moishi. Moishi. Yeah, Moishi, the policeman. Yeah, come policeman. on. Oh, no, he refuses to come in. Um, and I've got the video. Yeah, one Hi. of the reasons why Moishi was, it might, why he agreed to be a policeman and wear the helmet, because he gave himself a haircut and he said, the only way I'm coming into one of these is if my hair is covered. So we gave him a role. You don't want to his, see him without his hair. Yeah, where his hair is covered. And anyway, strangely enough, tomorrow, being Rosh Chodesh and Erev Shabbos, um, even those people that keep the first half of the Sphira, they actually are allowed to have haircuts and shave tomorrow. So you may see me clean shaven tomorrow. Uh, don't forget, it's going to be a special one tomorrow because we, well, it's always special. It's always, it's always special. It's always special. But we're going to do a little bit of Hallel, some songs from Hallel before we go into the Kabbalat Shabbat service. Uh, so that should be a little bit special as well. Anyway, I hope you're all kind of getting used to lockdown. And tomorrow, by the way, I'm going to pose a very interesting question. So make sure that you tune in. I'm going to give you a question to ponder. Uh, and I hope this, is, this has been the first week of, you know, really after Yom Tov, getting down to it, some schools most schools have gone back online and uh, you know for us that uh, are still at home you know what they say is cleaning up the house while uh, on lockdown and while having kids in the house is like uh, brushing your teeth eating biscuits type of thing it's not about cleaning because once you clean especially if you've got little kids which uh, i hope are all tucked up in bed um from well, what i've been hope you enjoyed it we hope you sang along we hope you'll put some music on and dance and have some real simple in the home in Rosh Chodesh. Yeah, before I go, my dear friends, uh, what I want to do is I want to count Safira. And yeah, are we after night? We are after night, yes. Uh, last night we counted 14. So, Baruch Atah Eloi Vahinu Melech Oilam Asher Kiddishon Lebe Mitzvah Yisrael Mitzvah Yisrael Al Sfira Saoimer Ayon Chamisha Asa Yoyim Shehem Shnei Shavuos Beyom Echad Laomer. There you have it. Today is 15 days, two weeks and one day. Dearest friends, it's been a delight Mazel singing tov. for you this evening. Mazel tov. 
Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov on the wedding, Mazel Tov. And uh, again, we will meet again soon. Let's hope it's really soon. I hope you've enjoyed it tonight. Stay safe until tomorrow. Don't be late. 6.30 sharp. We're going to be doing some songs of Halil and Kabbalah Shabbat. In the meantime, from Rocha and myself, from the whole of the Friday family, from Happy Hour, it's goodbye from us. Good night. Stay safe. Mwah!